afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the next session of Recover and Rise. I hope everybody has um, got settled in the room and everybody's au okay with the Remo platform. Um, I will ask Bradley in a minute just to jump on and, and give us a quick run through. Um, obviously, Recover and Rise is delivered and um, brought to us by West Sussex County Council in conjunction with several partners. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And we've got the fantastic Mike Humphreys talking to us today about website development. Um, but without further ado, let me um, introduce Bradley, who can just chat us through Remo and make sure everybody's comfortable and happy. Um, Bradley, are you there? Yep, there you are. Brilliant. Yeah, hello. Hi, thanks. Cheryl, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to team up with FreedomWorks uh, to deliver uh, this series um, of the Getting Online um, a digital accelerator series so um we are here powering the event on the on the brilliant remo platform um and for those that haven't used it before it can look a little well quite somewhat different to uh, zoom and teams and what a lot of people have become accustomed to um so whilst whilst uh, we're in this presentation mode um, just to highlight a couple of areas uh, particularly for when mike is speaking you will see the chat box on the right hand side so we uh, encourage people to contribute to the discussion there. Um, you can also see in the tabs above the chat box, there is a Q&A area, which I highly recommend if you have any questions for Mike during his presentation uh, to put them in there. It just saves that if there is discussion in the chat box, your question getting lost, uh, any question will, will find its way into the Q&A area. What I think uh, will be uh, sensible uh, for me to talk about the Remo platform in terms of the networking is I will do that just before we come back into the room and I will share um, my screen and just show you what you will go back into seeing. So uh, Cheryl, I think for now, that's probably the best thing uh, for everyone just to kind of understand the, um, the, the presentation mode. And just before we go back into the networking uh, and the discussion session after Mike's talk back into the room, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about how that works, I think, before um, people forget forget it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Bradley. That's appreciated. Um, so as, as Bradley just said, we're going to have a session um, from Mike Humphreys from Digibubble on website development. Um, we're also going to meet some of our digital champions and we're going to have a network session at the end that I hope you'll all stay for. I've got a couple of slides just to share with you very quickly, if I may, um, just about the series and just about what's coming up. So here we are, Recover and Rise, um, activating your online. So the whole series really is about how we can get the most in digital technology. We're up here at series one, getting online. We've got series two, series three, systems and productivity, and then series four, after Christmas, growth and expansion. Brought to you from different partners, Creative Bloom and Always Possible, but all on the same principle of getting you online and making sure that you can make the very, very best of digital technology. They're all at lunch times and you can book on to everything in advance. Um, here we are today on website development. Just in case you haven't looked further than today, here's the next um, four or five uh, webinars that are coming up. So this Thursday, stay with us again with Mike from Digibubble to improve your website. Then next week, we're talking web security and e-commerce. Then we're talking about visitor economy businesses. And number seven is our mega networking session where you can really access the experts and um, get to know everybody a little bit better. So as I say, Mike Humphreys today from Digibubble is going to be um, running our session. And uh, Mike's, I've actually I already had a little bit of a sneak preview, absolutely brilliant all about what a good website can do for you and what will work best, but also about cost and costs and pitfalls, which is really good. I think everybody needs to know what's it going to cost me and what do I need to watch out for? So before we go to Mike, I just want to introduce a few people, if I may, just very quickly, and I'll clear my screen. We've got our digital champions. If you bear with me, I'll come back on to here. We've got our digital champions who um, are coming to you through Coastal Capital, you can get free support from these digital champions. So if there's something particularly along the way that you think, oh, actually, I could really do with some help about that, you can access free support through our digital champions. A few of them are gonna be online every time we have one of these webinar series, and then they'll all be accessible 
um, at series seven with our networking. So if I may, just before we start with Mike, could I just um, ask Lisa and Malcolm and Rob and Susan just to pop on the screen quickly for 30 seconds, if I do one at a time, um, just introduce yourself so everybody knows who you are. Um, Malcolm, can I start with you? Are you there? Malcolm Duffett? He says, hopefully, yes, he's here. He's telling me he's here. If you pop your camera on and your mic on, there we go. Hi there. Hi, Malcolm. Hi, Cheryl. How are you doing? Hello, yes, everybody. Thank you. If you just want to get, just take a quick 30 seconds just sure. to introduce yourself, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. Yes, yeah, so as Cheryl mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm one of the digital champions working with uh, Coast Capital. Uh, my background is 20 odd years now in e-commerce and digital uh, from website design and e-commerce store building to performance marketing, customer acquisition, email marketing. Uh, I've held roles um, agency side uh, in terms of web and marketing agencies and I've also held uh, head of e-commerce roles for food and drink and luxury uh, products brands. I now work as a freelance consultant um, and I help businesses who sell products to consumers to do that better and sell more. Brilliant. Thank you, Malcolm. And you're actually running one of our webinars in the next week. Yes, so, I'll be in the e-commerce one uh, next Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll hear a lot more from Malcolm then. Thank you ever so much. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you. Um, I think I've got Susan on screen as well now. Susan, if you just want to pop your camera on for me. Yep, just bear with me a second. Yeah, lovely, Susan Winchester. So, sorry, I'm just trying to put my camera on. Hold on a sec. Okay. Sorry, it did come up that I, sorry. That's all right. In terms of, uh, well, hi, hello everybody. Anyway, it's uh, Susan Winchester. I'm working with Coast to Capital. I've been with, we're doing it as, working as a digital and growth champion with them for the last um, 18 months or so. Prior to that, I um, worked, uh, started my career business marketing, business strategy in the financial services industry. Then I worked for a uh, Department for International Trade, promoting British businesses um, for the financial services sector and encouraging inward investment to the UK. Since then, I've been working as a freelancer on mainly in a digital transformation kind of capacity, uh, helping businesses uh, grow and improve their presence, prove their presence to uh, sell more in the marketplace. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Brilliant. Thank you, Susan. And thank you for joining us today. And we'll have a look at that camera business with you after if you want us to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it's gone. But anyway, sorry about that. No, no worries. Thank you ever so much. And uh, Lisa, Lisa, are you there? Lisa Kerr? I know you are because I've been chatting with you already. If you just pop your camera and your mic on. Brilliant. There you are. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to see you. Nice to see you again, those who came to the last workshop. Um, I'm Lisa Kerr from Consulting with Care, and my business focuses on productivity for profitability. Um, so I look at all areas of systems and processes, but particularly using digital systems, digital tools um, to make your business more efficient. So I will be particularly interested in the series three of these workshops, which is all about productivity and really happy to help with anything else along the way. Thanks, Cheryl. Yeah. Brilliant. No, absolutely brilliant. Somebody understands the back end of it all. So that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again, because I know you were with us last week. So thanks no again. No problem. Lisa. And uh, last, Rob. Rob, are you there with us today? I think you are. Rob, where are you? You can pop your camera on and your mic on. Hello. There you are. Here I am. Yes. So, yes, I'm another of the digital champions. Uh, I'm a consultant, leadership coach. Uh, and an author. Uh, I wrote this book, if you're interested, it's upside down. Um, and uh, what I do really is I work with business leaders and do three things to understand where they are relative to their competitors um, from a digital capability perspective, to identify the opportunities and threats in their market, and then help them develop a strategy to develop those digital capabilities. And uh, really, I'm looking at the whole spectrum from people, processes and, and technology. A little bit about my background. Um, I've started up and run digital agencies in London. I was e-commerce director for Tui Travel um, in Crawley for uh, seven years. And I was driving digital transformation across 100 odd SMEs uh, in the UK and globally. So uh, that's a little bit about me and uh, really looking forward to working with you all. 
Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Rob. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so that's our digital champions that are here with us today. And as I say, um, after Mike's session on web development, there will be a chance to have a chat with them in the room. Um, but let's move swiftly on um, to Mike. Mike Humphreys, who's um, his company, Digibubble, are proficient in every aspect of web. I could go on and on, couldn't I, Mike? Um, but uh, as I say, I, I've had a sneak preview. This is a brilliant presentation, so I hope you enjoy it. Over to you, Mike. Thanks, Cheryl. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for thank you for listening and coming along. So, yeah, as has been highlighted, um, I am going to be talking with you today about website development and just going through some of the fundamentals that we need to lay as a clear foundation. So to kick off, we we'll just have a quick look at what's what's coming up. First of all, introduce me. Who's this guy? Um, and then we'll go into some of the website foundations, looking at the different types of websites, domains, website hosting, emails. And also importantly, what is a CMS, a content management system, which is the foundations of your site and how to make a good choice around what's best for your business. Um, then we're going to have a look at a bit more of the processes around actually building and evolving your site. So considering your navigation, your planning and content, and also some key design considerations. And then aside of that, we're also going to have a quick look at media. Um, how we do mobile and multi-device testing, and then finally looking at analytics and tracking. So with that, I'll move on to our first slide, which was a bit of an introduction about me and my business. So Digibubble, we are a full service digital agency that started in 2006. Um, we are a partnership and my, my business partner, Keith, is on the call somewhere. Um, that We were built on a technical and a digital advertising background. So Keith and I both recognize that we have a broad range of skills that are in demand in the market. We both had experience of project managing and delivering large digital, digital projects. And what we did is identify that there was a consistent issue between digital support companies um, and what companies required and actually the support that they received. So a bit from 2006 to 2015, both Keith and I worked as a bit of a side hustle and involved a number of businesses uh, websites during that time and in November 2015 we both took the plunge quit full-time employment and um, and built Digibubble and what that's come to look like now is a, a central controlling point for businesses digital touch points so we build functional websites that are secure and compliant we build and run digital advertising across a number of mediums and um, we work with enhanced functionality and tools like e-commerce and booking systems um, we write and build content and news blogs and present our clients as thought leaders within their sector. Um, we report and we provide insight and strategy consultation. And for us, the most important thing for us is looking at what our performance indicators for our clients' requirements online and what is their ROI. So what is the return that they're looking for? Um, so that's us. So um, moving on into the foundations of what you can um, expect to see online um, is first of all what's a website so a, a website is a number of inked interlinked web pages that share a, a common um, domain name so a place think of it as a digital leaflet for your business um, or a set of tools that businesses can can provide online um, the different types of websites are, are brochures so these are what, like the entry level almost just a leaflet online give you some bit of company information a bit of a breakdown of what your company does and some some basic contact details and automated forms then we go into magazines news and blog posts a little bit more involved a little bit more content heavy a few few larger sites require tools are required e-commerce so actually starting to manage payments through the system communicate with third pay, third partners like sage and world pay and payment gateways paypal um, then there's marketing so smaller less information but more lead generation and business generation from from your online um, and then advanced functions so we sort of include in calendar updates and all sorts of the the, the world's your oyster when it comes to what you want the, your website to do the tools are available um, so looking at, at your domain, which is a very important element. So this is the actual URL, the address that you would be, um, you would, you, you, people would find your website when they type it into the address bar. Um, there's um, a number of examples there. So .gov is looking at 
government websites, .edu is education, nonprofits go under org, commercial websites have come in .com and .uk, .co.uk. Um, there's a broad range of additional ones, .shop, .mobile, there's all sorts out there. Um, I've listed a few down at the bottom, a few partners where you can obtain domains. So Google, 123, GoDaddy, 34SP are common, so at least top 10 providers of domains. And in terms of pricing, you can be looking at anywhere from two, two or three pounds up to thousands of pounds per year for your domain, depending on, on how active the keyword or the term that people are searching for. So there's a very broad brush stroking um, um, pattern of thought around your domain. And we start looking at hosting. So actually you need to really think about where your website is gonna be stored online. So a web host is a service that makes your, your site accessible to people searching. So these are companies that own physical servers that your website is stored on. And then when your domain is searched or your domain is typed into your address bar, it gets pointed to those those hosting servers. It's important to choose a good partner with this. A, a bad uh, website host will result in, in poor performance in terms of speed, SEO, um, the tools and the functions that you need to do. So if you do have payment gateways and you need a lot of quick back and forth, you need to make sure that your website hosting is there. Um, again, the prices around this really, really vary. You can you can start as a web host from five pounds, six pounds a month, um, going up to thousands, depending on how big your website is going to be, and what the sort of tools and the speed in which you need to communicate to these servers are. As a company, we we generally stick with Amazon Web Services, which is a cloud-based and it's scalable, so it it grows and shrinks according to your demand. And at the moment, they're market leaders. Um, next element is we're looking at email hosting. Now, I, I put this in. It's not necessarily web development, but they fall into the, a similar bucket. A lot of time, clients will come to us and say, oh, I, I thought that my website hosting and my email hosting are, are, are the same, and they're fundamentally not. Um, what you need to think about is that your website is probably the lighter load. There's probably less for a host to think about with your website than there is for your email. Your email's got hundreds of attachments, contacts, PDFs held in, in storage for a long, long time. So if, you're, if you've got a lot of emails back and forth, looking at a good, robust, well-rounded suite of tools for your email is important. Um, G Suite and Office 365 are two email hosted email providers that we, we regularly recommend to our clients. Prices for these start from five pounds up to 30, 40, 50 pounds, depending on the range of tools that, that you require. Um, so moving into the real guts of your website. So now we've picked our domain, we've picked our host, we've got our emails and, and we've got it all synced up and, and ready to go. Start thinking about what is the, gonna be the very foundation of your website. Um, so a content management system is a software application that enables you to control and edit your website and your digital content. So WordPress is very, very common. Um, um, Joomla is sort of a good intermediate, a little bit trickier than WordPress, and then Drupal is where you really start building into some bespoke um, systems. Again, the price points vary. WordPress have got free options, but the tools that you get behind the free options are very, very limited. Um, what your content management system is going to allow you to do is to create and edit your content, um, control workflow, organize yourself, um, assign users to your account so you can have editor levels, you can have administrators that look after the whole site, customer levels, so you can manage your your users and you can do that securely. Um, also, given that we are now very much international and there's going to be more than likely opportunities for you to work across um, different languages and different capabilities internationally, making sure that your CMS is geared up for that. Um, making sure that your your content management system allows you to scale your business. So actually you're not just narrowing your, your field of view into one or two sets of tools that you need now, allow you to look at what you are gonna do to grow and evolve and make sure that your CMS system is ready to grow and evolve with you. Um, 
and they would all in this in this example they would all allow personalization analytics commerce um, management systems tools all sorts of stuff go on in there um, I thought also take a moment just to recognize that there's a few DIY options for you. So if budget is limited and you are looking at raising just a little bit of a presence online with the hope to evolve companies, WordPress, as I say, offer a, a price range from free up the, the world's your oyster. Wix, again, have got free options and Squarespace have got free options. They're limited. And as you start to grow and evolve and want more tools like e-commerce within Wix can actually be quite an expensive hobby. Um, Squarespace is very limited with the gateway partners that it uses. So make sure that you really have a fundamental understanding of what your tools are and, and what your requirements are. And do you have the right tools for that? And my, my personal recommendation is look at the future. What are you going to be trying to achieve with your with your digital presence in a year's time? And what would those costs be? So it may be better to, to work with developers, work with designers earlier in the process because trying to evolve your Wix website into a full spec e-commerce platform that's fully bespoke is going to be potentially a lot of work in the future. Um, so that's fundamentally the, 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 the fundamentals. Um, so what I'm going to start looking at now is looking at the process involved with with actually starting to build and think about your your website content in particular. So start with the navigation. Um, start planning your navigation to understand what is it your audience are there for and how are you going to direct them through. It's a journey on your website. If you throw everything at them on the home page, they're probably going to be a bit bombarded and they're going to be probably start trying to distance themselves from the website. Allow them to control the journey and allow your users to throw, flow through the website. And that comes primarily from your navigation. Um, use use a friendly language. We don't have to be formal and um, you don't already have to really sort of think about the language is, is, is a bit like set in its ways. You, know, you can be friendly, you can be open, you can have the language on your website represent you and your brand. Um, stick to web conventions. The user now online gets the idea that there's a navigation bar somewhere at the top, either with the little the, the, the burger menu, you know, we know things like the logo is going to link to the, the home page and they're going to be able to scroll down. And that's where they're going to see at the bottom a fat footer with address details, company number. Um, if you've got affiliate relationships that you're trying to negotiate, you can have all of this in the footer. Um, pick your primary navigation. So what are your top five, five or six points and signposts that you want to send people to your website? And always consider what is your responsive journey looking like? So actually, how is this navigation going to translate into mobile and into tablet and varying screen sizes? Um, so that's a quick look at the, the navigation there. So moving into planning and content is if you've got current copy, have a look at it. Keep evaluate it. What are you happy with? Tone of voice. Um, does it really match what your audience has come to come to expect from you? So determine your target audience and do a bit of research and to find out what your target audience thought process is like online. Um, use site maps really. So we we tend to have a good session on a whiteboard where we've got post-it notes and really having a look at what the site map is going to look like. Where can we streamline content? Um, where can we really start? collaborating with others to to, to build in a, a, a well linking the content with the navigation and make sure that it's a good smooth journey um, tell a story don't don't sell a story but t tell the story if it's about why you've come to market what problems you're you're searching for you know make it personal do right for humans as well as search engines it can be quite daunting to think right I'm gonna write content specifically so Google can start picking up my content and then it becomes a bit sort of detached from your target audience. So really think the two the two in tandem. Um, make your copy action orientated. So actually tell people while they're there, what is it you want them to do? Complete this audit, audit buy this pair of sunglasses, you know, complete a digital health check, whatever it happens to be. Let people know why they're there and what you want them to do. And Give your copy some visual appeal, you know, that's, that's, that's create space and use white space to really build a graphic and a visual journey that matches you, your business and your brand. 
So moving on into your design consideration. So like I said previously, what are your goals? You identify and you can write down what your goals are. So what you want people to do, identify that target audience and then define your unique selling proposition. So why is your audience going to pick you above it? I another comp competitor out there and um, get that domain name, secure it very early in the process because you don't want to go two months into developing the website and then realize that your domain name's taken and you have to rebrand everything. Um, you've chosen your technical foundations with your CMS and your domain and your hosting and then start collecting those de design elements as well as written copy. What animations are you going to have? What photos, videos, um, blogs are you going to be using? And then start to build content for the core pages. So don't think necessarily the home page because the home page is is just the synopsis it's just an over it's a broad brush stroke of what they can find under the covers um if you start writing from those tier two pages so write your about us write your history section write down what your services do write down your unique selling proposition and then once you've got all of that it's very easy to to streamline that and build that into the home page um so that's our design and um, the design elements. So looking at our key considerations, what we need to think about. Um, if you're looking at media, photos and videos, um, what we could do is my recommendation is to make it authentic and genuine. Um, stock images are great. There's Shutterstock. There's all sorts of services that would work really well. Um, but they're very common now and people can see through sort of the, the, the lack of authenticity. So commit to a photographer, come into your business, take photos of you and your team, really make it a personalized story and that authenticity will really make a difference. Um, stick to your brand, stick to that style and consistency and make sure the quality is there. So if you've got, if the raw media you're working with is the highest possible quality you can afford, then a good graphic designer, a good web developer um, will be able to scale that down maintain the quality but still making sure that the 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 file size and type is 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 appropriate so really monitor that that quality um make sure that they're relevant so you know the, the your, your your pictures and your media are telling a story and they've got a purpose behind what they're doing um consider your seo so the the you can optimize the back of your photos to really consider what the keywords you're trying to target what's the what are the search engines going to be looking at the meta tags behind and the or to attributes behind your images what are they going to be looking at and then like i said consider that type the the media type and the file size that's very important if you're going to have really heavy videos you need to start looking at some third party tools to really streamline your videos onto the site so your hosting needs to be spot on or you need to work with something like a youtube or a vimeo to stream those videos um the media as well photos scale those down ready for web because you don't want to have large data large large file sizes having to be loaded when people first land on your website it's going to slow the website down and ultimately lead to a drop off in audiences because they won't they won't hang around um so multi-device it's sort of common now I, I read an article that there's now over 800 separate devices just in the uk for people to view a website from and that includes kindles ipads of varying sizes all of the android phones so the the key to to having a mobile experience is to really plan it and really think from the ground up what component parts on the website am i going to be utilizing to make the the mobile journey worthwhile and prioritize the user experience. So it's quite good to get sucked into some design element flip boxes that work really, really well on desktop, but they don't translate into a mobile experience very well. So prioritize the user experience and make sure that you get that dynamic sorted first before you then start adding in layers of complexity. Um, and also don't assume that your mobile visitors are in transit. They're not always on the bus. They're not always walking the dog. Sometimes they're just sitting there watching Bake Off and are, are scanning through something that they're trying to buy. So they're multi-screening. So, so consider that when you're building a, a, a digital project that's mobile friendly. Um, 
make your content easy to read so that's the volume of it on mobile people have got less attention span when it comes to word count so try and keep it snappy try and keep the headlines very directional looking back at our content plan is make sure you tell people quickly about what you want them to do and what what is the process you're looking there and also your content management, your CMS system is key to whether or not your system's going to work across multi-device. So really consider this early and then start matching your tools to, a, to, a, to apply to that. Um, so analytics and tracking. This is this is where my this is my favorite bit of any website. So if it's live and it's running, it's not going to work unless you really understand what your audience are doing and you can start to evolve and build out your project and shape the future developments because you understand your consumer's behavior. So Google Analytics are market leader, but there are other systems. Adobe's got some very advanced tools. Hotjar is a good example if you're trying to see heat maps on websites. So what are the hot spots on your website and where should you be putting more calls to action and where should you be evolving your content? So without analytics, it's going to be really hard to get a real good steer on how you can evolve and build your digital project and you need your analytics to influence your marketing message because for all of the will in the world and all of the years experience your, your, your digital support partner might have without the analytics it, it, then, then they're going to be able to prove themselves right or wrong and that's what you need to do and you need to really understand that analytics understand the user journey and track and monitor those six your successes so put in conversion tracking you start understanding how many people do i need to send to my website to get a closed piece of business and what is that piece of business worth but i go into a little bit more detail on thursday session for improving your website but at the very foundations of building your site, you need to get some Google Analytics or a similar platform into your website so you can really start building out a, a better understanding of what your audience is up to. Um, so here are some top tips as we sort of approach the end of the presentation here. So research your audience. Audience is key. Build your digital project for them. Um, know your enemy. So go out, find out who in your space is, is, is working, who do you aspire to be, and what are they doing that's winning. Um, use headings. So don't just load in a number of text-based uh, sections across your site. Use headings because these gets picked up easier by search engines, start giving you a better SEO responses, and you start sort of getting that organic traffic climbing quite organically. Um, hook your reader so give them give them something from your home page really start giving them little snippets and little insights to what they can experience when they start to delve a little deeper into your site and um, don't overcoat over complicate things and what i call front load your information if, if you're selling sunglasses online you don't need to be coy about it let's put it right there in the top top header and tell people yeah, click here to buy sunglasses now. If you've got that information at the top, you've streamlined that journey into the, into the deeper element of your website. So that also leans on be direct. Um, a conversational tone is key. And what you want to do is be active. Don't sit back and, and hope that people are going to be coming onto your website and working it. Be active. Go and find your audience. Research. Get their feedback. Really start to build out and evolve your content strategies to really match with, with search trends online. Um, be generous. You know, people with, with your visuals, people are on their mobile phones, people are on their laptops, and they don't just want to read a whole page of content. That's be generous to signpost people with nice visual graphics. That's use the white space um, intelligently on the space. You've got it. You might as well use it and leave out the jargon, especially within our within our industry. There's tons of jargon and there's no doubt the same for every every, every industry out there. So just simplify it. Keep it conversational. Be direct and research is is the main tips we've got out of that. And and that's the end of um my presentation. So thank you, everyone. And I'm happy to go through any questions if there's um, any. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely brilliant. There are some questions, actually. Um, and that's why I popped onto the screen, because I was going to try and interrupt you and then thought better of it. Oh, so sorry. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> sorry about that. A um, couple of questions, actually. So um, Lisa asks, if you've already got a website that's hosted by one provider, how easy is it to swap to somebody else? Uh, it, there's a lot of moving parts, the so size of the website, the sort of tools that you've got and what needs to be transferred. Fundamentally, it can be 
um, an easy process. So Keith on the call would look after that within within our business. So there is a technical element that needs to be taken care of. I wouldn't like to take it on, um, but we we can transfer websites from one provider to another within within hours, a couple of hours. So prices vary. There's a lot of moving parts, but it's not it's not a difficult job that you should shy away from. Okay. And also, much on the same sort of um, lines, if, you're, if you've got a, a website that uses Wix as the content management system, how easy is it to move to a different content management system? Say, I mean, Lisa suggests Joomla. So I'm guessing this is from a startup website that maybe somebody has built onto something a little bit more progressive. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of dynamics where Wix and Squarespace moving into WordPress is they've both got tools built into the platform where you can export the website and it, it allows you to move it into WordPress. So those mechanisms are in place. Again, you'll need some technical help to do it. Where you start going into Jupyter and Drupal is that these are bespoke, like you need to be a coder to really understand and build out these platforms in any real meaningful way. So yeah, I'd say you'd need some professional help, but if you pick the right profession, uh, the right professional if you pick a Keith then you, it's going to be easy um, doing it yourself I'd say it's it's going to be more tricky but the, the information's out there but it's also like you say if it's part of an evolutionary process then I'd say that would be a good time to sort of open up a consultation with a company like Digibubble and say right this is what my ambitions are these are the tools that I'm hoping to unlock mm -hmm. and is a full scale bespoke hard coded website right for you it it might not be so there could be a number of options so i'd say get a conversation going with with a partner you can trust and just sort of thrash out the plan yeah so really have a good plan in place before you actually do anything to sort of make sure that you're getting the right tools if you like for, for the job in hand yeah um got quite a few questions popping up actually mike so please don't go anywhere um <laughs> In terms of finding your new website, and I think this is something you're going to cover more on Thursday, but how realistic is it to get onto page one of Google um, using SEO and are Google Ads a good option? Um, yeah, well, so for something like Digibubble, if, if someone searches my company online, I've we've gone to great lengths to make sure that we dominate that keyword. So what is your branded search? Now, you should be making headway on from the second your website's live on on getting your branded term found very easily so you, I'd, I'd say you give it three months before the search engines really settle in and you've got yourself a consistent top page for your brand um for other keywords if it's something like personal loan they're going to be a really aggressive um tough market to hit so what we tend to do is focus on niche keywords we look at search trends we do keyword research into what are the common terms that people are searching and when and you start building your content strategy around that if you set that pattern in from the foundation of your website build then over time you're going to become a really strong seo um sort of partner because you are ultimately asking Google for their customers to come to you. So you want to give Google all of the information they want. So it it, it, it can be very difficult if you're in a competitive market. Um, but for something like your branded term, it, it, you should be able to get yourself page one relatively quickly. Brilliant. OK, I've got a few more here, actually. Um, any thoughts on the Oh, this is a different, tricky one, actually. Any thoughts on the average number of pages a good website should have? Um, and what are the must-haves in uh, terms of pages? I think anything, we, we generally say around 2,000 words. So if it's a brochure website, so this is a, 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 a website that's just broadcasting who you are, what you do, and what you want your customers to do. So think something like a decking company, um, antiques dealers, um anything that's just just giving information without having an e-commerce element or uh, having any of these advanced tools then no more than two thousand words is enough to sort of get your content writer to start working with and um yeah and page count the world's moved past page count a little bit more if you've got something like wordpress you can duplicate all of your pages and build out content um, quite easily so it's not really a load for your designer to think about it's more of a consideration for your hosting so actually the bigger your website the more hosting requirements you need and the slower that website's going to go so I would say that there, there isn't really an average 
but the fundamentals that you want your pages, I always think of the old who, what, why, where, when, how, you know, answer those questions. People, people, if, if you're a plumber in Bogdan Regis, you're going to need people, a little hello, I'm a plumber, a little bit about you and your dog, and then the services you offer, the areas you cover, why you're better than the market, and, and, a, and a way of people getting in touch and having an, a, a contact form. That's not a huge amount to to put together. If you know your business and you know it well, you can get that knocked out pretty quick. Um, and regarding SEO, search engine optimization, are we, or are you of the opinion that pictures are, is picture optimization better or page text and headings? Uh, I would say page text and headings because fundamentally when you search, it's all about the keywords. And even within search engines, the search engines are looking for hard text written behind the image in alternate attributes they're called so you put them in a behind the behind the image so um images are important because they, it's more common that people are looking at the visuals they're looking at image search but a majority of the traffic that comes from seo is text-based so i would focus on your headings and your content and then the the supporting images that you're putting within that are, are supporting that so it works as a holistic solution for the page really and sorry, I've got a few more. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> how important is it to update your website regularly? It's vital mm. every month. Mm -hmm. If and if you're not, you, you've just got to. But if you're considering SEO, if you're considering even SEO starts impacting how Google Ads ranks you, so even can impact your paid advertising. Um, if you're not updating your information, if the connections you've got with third parties like Google My Business is out of date, if you're, if the bottom of your website says 2017, then from a visual perspective, so excluding search engines and SEO, um, your customers are not going to be thinking great about you. Oh, we haven't updated your website, not even the number at the bottom that tells me is 2017. Do you work there? Do you not work? It, it, it creates an element of unknown. Um, from a SEO perspective, the search engines are going to be looking as one of the major scores is when was the website last updated? Because Google doesn't want to send their customers to a website that's five years out of date. So, yeah, I'd say get content, something regularly that you can update to show that you're active. If it's a blog post, if it's a case study, even if it's a social media feed and you're active on your social media, something on your website that tells Google and your customers that you are in business and you are still going. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, and actually, a little point about videos and MP4s. And um, Vicky's mm. asked, can you add MP4s easily if they're not from YouTube? I know there's a huge surge, isn't there, in, in video production yeah. and moving video, videos online. Um, Vicky found one site that came up with errors and they couldn't do it. So how easy is it to, to sort of plug in things to your website, plug in videos, MP4s, yeah. whatever? Yeah, there's tools out there for you to do it well. Um, MP4s and like the, the raw files are quite heavy. So mm -hmm. actually, if you can start looking at a partner that's so like a Vimeo, like a YouTube, pay the extra to have a professional grade account on that because then they're doing the hosting, they're doing the heavy lifting, and they're just streaming it through to your website. So your website doesn't have that, 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 that file size behind it. So it can really impact your page speed. It can really impact the load times of your website if you've got these big heavy files on there. So it is possible if you're having troubles with MP4, you give that QR a scan and that will get 10 minutes with 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 us and we can talk you through have a look at the back of the site and work it out so it can be quite drawn out videos can be quite problematic and heavy media can be quite problematic okay so just picking up on that mike that little qr code there that we're all mm. looking at that can be scanned can it if somebody yeah let's see if you've got your mobile i did test it, it was working and i've done it again it's working so that'll take you through to the digibubble website We've got a good collection of tools. So on Thursday section, I'm talking through a few tools that we've got on the site. So we've got a website health checker. So it grades your website and gives mm -hmm. you a score about your performance. Um, an ROI calculator. So you can actually calculate what you should and shouldn't be bidding. What is a comfortable bid range for you? Um, so there's lots of tools we've got on the site. We, we're firmly in the belief that if we share our knowledge with you, it allows us to do our job better. Yeah, no, that's absolutely brilliant. These questions are just going on and on and on. So, I mean, obviously it's a really, really interesting subject. I think probably for the best, to give you a break as well as anything else, Mike, 
um you're, you're hanging around for our networking session. yeah I'm, I'm about and I, you don't have to shut it down for me i can talk about this for days i could you tell me when to shut up is the old one <laughs> oh kindred spirit um <laughs> so what i was going to suggest is um that we actually move on just the last little bit of our presentation and then we go into networking and mike if you're happy the questions that aren't answered maybe those people can can sort of talk with you at the networking session yeah and i'll, I'll be about answered. yeah so, and the yeah. details are there i love a chat so just ju jump on the phone give us a call we're, all, we're always happy to share a bit of advice Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And obviously, Mike is going to be not only is going to be with us for the next half an hour, but he's also going to be with us again on Thursday, talking about how to improve your website and some little hints and tips and tricks and some case studies of where Digibubble have actually worked with some local clients to really make make some magic happen. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Lovely. Thank brilliant. you ever so much, everyone. Thanks ever so much, Mike, and we'll chat with you in a minute. Thank you. Um, so just as i say um following on from that we are going to hang around we have got a little networking session for half an hour but before we go into that i just wanted to share some funding and some grant opportunities with you um if i may just sorry bear with me a minute just to make sure that everybody is aware of these um because not only are we able to signpost you to support from our digital champions we've also got some grant funding that we're aware of. So I just wanted to raise these. We will share all of these slides. So please don't feel that you have to sort of start scribbling down like mad. Um, we'll also share Mike's slides. So first and foremost, the Business Hot House in um, Chichester have actually got some grant funding available at the moment. Um, so if you are looking to build a new website, you might want to have a chat with the Business Hot House first because they've actually got some money to, to give away um, some match funded money. So do have a chat with them. We've also got low case, low carbon across the southeast, who again have funding um, for businesses that want to adapt to climate change. And then there's RISE, um, which is a knowledge exchange through the University of Brighton and Sussex. So there are so many support um, streams at the moment and grant funding to really help you um, <clears throat> excuse me, to really absolutely help you get your business moving and to do what you need to do. Um, I'm going to quickly hand you over to Bradley again, who's just going to whiz through um, how we're going to network on Remo. And I know lots of people have got lots of questions um, about um, continuing on from Mike's presentation. So Bradley, if you can just explain to us what we can and can't do, that'd be absolutely fab. Thank you. <laughs> I will do. And I'm just going to very quickly share my screen. So uh, just to show you what you're going to be going back into, and this is the Remo room. Uh, some of you will be familiar with this because you came in just before the presentation, uh, but some have joined during the presentation. So this is what we are going to go back into. Uh, when Cheryl closes down the presentation mode, uh, you will just need to turn your camera and microphone on. Uh, you will just see uh, that it looks like a real room, and that is the beauty of the Remo platform. And what you have the ability to do is move from table to table. So if you see a table with an empty seat, all you need to do is double click on that table and you will move there straight away. Your camera and microphone when it's turned on will appear at the top of the screen. My advice is when you are on a table, if you see in the control bar at the bottom of your screen, there's an option to use tile view. This makes everyone on your table appear much bigger and in a much more user friendly way. Um, if you want to find anyone in particular, you'll see that these little circles, some, some are colored circles, some have people's faces on. These are people in the room. So you can actually find people in the room. You can click on their icons. A virtual business card will appear if you click on their icons. And if you want to join someone on a specific table, let's say Mike, for example, um, if you want to go and find Mike and ask him lots of those questions that were uh, unanswered, all you need to do is just uh, scan uh, your mouse around the room, find Mike and uh, double click on his table. But given that there were so many questions, I'm not sure there'll be an empty seat on his table um, immediately. If you need any help, uh, you'll see on the left hand side, there are some help desks. So please just come over and see myself or my colleague Nikita 
Uh, here's where we can give you some help on the Remo platform. But we'll let you get back into it, really, um, and, uh, and, and make the most of the platform. It's a, it's a really interactive platform. The idea is that it, it, it makes the networking experience a lot more authentic and humanized. So, um, yeah, that, that's it from me. But if anyone has any questions, just use the chat box or come and find us on the left-hand side in the help desks. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Bradley. So all remains to do then really is to say thank you ever so much for attending today. As I say, just to um, confirm, we will send slides out to anybody who would like those slides um, from Mike's presentation and our slides as well. So you've got those grant and funding opportunities. Don't forget the digital champions are also in the room. So um, if you're thinking, Sydney are thinking, oh, actually, I could really do with some help for strategy for my website or for I don't know, Google ads or whatever it might be, um, go and chat with a, a digital champion as well because you can sign up for some free support. Um, so please do stay with us and please do book for Thursday's session and come along and hear from Mike again about how we can improve our websites and what we can do to, to power up our businesses even more. So thank you all very much and I shall see you in the networking shortly. <laughs>